Okay, well, kudos to our first poster pitch presenter. We're going to move on to our second presenter. That's Selvi Sahin from Ankara University in the Department of Food Engineering. Thank you. Hello to all the and audiences. I would like to talk about our study, which is formation and physical stability of hazelnut oil non-emulsion. First of all, I know you have some questions in your mind about hazelnut oil. So let me give you some brief information about why we focused on hazelnut oil in our study. Hazelnut oil has an important place in edible oil industry, especially refined hazelnut oil is a suitable product to use in different food industrial areas. Um, on the other hand, uh, oxidation reactions can become some deterioration in quality. So at the end, the low quality uh, oils can be obtained, unfortunately. At this point, nanoemulsion technology can be applied on hazelnut oil. And in this way, different types of hazelnut oil, which stands long-term and high quality, can be obtained easily. Furthermore, uh, there are no detailed studies in, li in literature uh, about this subject. So also it's aimed to make an initial contribution uh, adapting with hazelnut, with adapting hazelnut oil to non-emulsion technology. So as you can see in our study, it was targeted to obtain oil in water non-emulsions by using two types of surfactants. One is natural whey protein isolate and the other one is synthetic to win 80. And then we acquired our scores emulsions by using ultra tracks device. After this homogenization section, uh, emulsions prepared with different initial surfactant ratio were passed through a microfluidizer with different pressures. Depends on the results, uh, the suitable conditions and the ideal particle diameters were measured. And also, the effects of environment conditions on non-emulsions were specified. Uh, and finally, in vitro digestion analysis were applied on our non-emulsions and free fatty acid release in human digestive system were specified. The valuable change were observed in uh, pH differences, especially non-emulsions, which were prepared by whey protein isolate surfactants, showed and uh, physical instability, as you can see, at, isoelectric, uh, at pH 5, which is isoelectrical uh, point. This point is a, a characteristic feature for am amino acids, especially at this point, uh, neutral amino acids, formation of neutral amino acids is in question since acidic and the basic properties of uh, amino acids are approximately equal. But uh, on the other uh, points, which are far from pH 5, which is isoelectric point, non-emulsions remained more stable. So, um, so we can uh, say at the end, to win AT, non-emulsions um, remained more stable than whey protein isolate non-emulsions under uh, environmental conditions. So can this product be implemented? Yes, we have many good reasons for this. First of all, it's, the, it's a stable and high quality product if it's produced under right conditions. And as you can see, uh, the, it has a 90% of uh, digestion rate, which is a good proportion for human digestion system. And this product is suitable to produce by natural surfactants like whey protein isolate. And uh, devices are effective and suitable to use industrial conditions. So uh, we can say highly effective products can be produced if, if uh, can be produced by allocating an affordable capital. Thank you for your listening. If you have any question, I will be happy to answer. All right, well, thank you, Selvi, for that poster pitch. 
Um, I'm not seeing any questions from the audience, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the judges for their uh, feedback and question period. Oh, so can, can you explain to me what's the benefit of making the oil into a nano emulsion compared with anything else, you know, just you know, drinking it or, or, or consuming it in some other way? What's so special about the nano emulsion and, and how is this an original thing to do? Okay, thank you, first of all. Um, as you know, uh, oils have very uh, special um, components like uh, phenols or uh, tocopherols. These are very important uh, sub um, components for human body. So especially we uh, plan to combine hazelnut oil with non-emotions to uh, enhance its benefits. For example, it can be used in uh, some beverage uh, industry. Uh, as you know, there are a common industry like vitamin added water. So it can be used uh, like that. And also, uh, as you know, there are lots of people who, who have to need uh, feed it with a fluid uh, food. It can be used for these types of foods. And um, like that, I can say. Well, you mean because it's already an emulsion, it'll mix in more easily. So if you added it to some water, because it's already an emulsion, it's mixed in. Whereas if you just added the oil, it wouldn't be. Yes, is that, yes, you're is that right. what you mean? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. That's that's clear. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Uh, you've talked about stability of these emulsions. Have you looked at the centrifugal stability of your emulsion or um, are storage times for your emulsions, you know, how long they're stable for? Um, yes, uh, there was our um, environmental conditions, like you said. Uh, we, uh, we measured temperature and uh, salt added conditions. And also, um, by protein isolate non-emulsions showed less stability under these conditions. Um, but on the other hand, non-emulsions, as you know, prepared with protein, so uh, they have a they have a tendency to being a uh, um, instability, like in three or four days. Yes, it was a um, maybe limitation for us, but um, we are no no longer we know the right conditions, so um, we can produce the right. Um, products on the right conditions. Okay. So do you think the fatty acid composition of your hazelnut oil has any type of effect on the, the size of your, you know, uh, nanoparticles or the stability of your emulsion? Um, sorry, could you repeat again? So the fatty acid composition of your hazelnut oil, mm -hmm. right? Does it have any effect on your nanoparticle size or, or mm. your emulsion stability? Yes, uh, it was the one of the aimed uh, to measure the particle size because uh, if an emulsion have a little particle size, it has uh, it can be released uh, easily in human body. So. Um, when we uh, when we measured our different uh, type different particle diameter of emulsions, we saw that the bigger one uh, have a um, bigger one tend to be uh, gathering, and so um, they are um, their release is more difficult than the uh, smaller ones. So when you say bigger and smaller, what are you talking about? The, the fatty acid chain length? No, uh, I mean droplet size. Uh, droplet. The, mm -hmm. the, uh, for example, our uh, ideal drum diameter was, uh, I mean, 216 for 780. They are a suitable form uh, to release easily and free fatty acid uh, really, uh, ratio. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
I, I really like the flow of the presentation. I feel like it gave a very good uh, scope as to why it was um, done and kind of the applications moving forward. So I thought that was very good. Thank you. Um, the pH ranges that uh, the stability was tested over, uh, mm -hmm. were those indicative of kind of, I guess, the human gut where I guess we're hoping to have this in a stable? Was that how it was chosen? Um, do you mean in human body? Sorry. Yes, I suppose you had a range of pHs where you mm -hmm. found that five was not so stable. Um, well, I guess what uh, made you choose that range? Um, actually, we tr we want to um, measure the whole scale, uh, but you know the human body's pH nearly seven. Um, we want to see this too, but. Um, and also we want to see isoelectric points, how our nano emulsions react. Uh, so actually there's no specific reason for this, but we wanted to see uh, the whole range. Understood, understood. And is there any uh, difficulty between the two um, emulsions, the uh, way isolate versus the tween 80, I believe it was? Differences, right? Uh, I guess differences slash difficulty. Yeah, uh, actually there are no exact differences between both of them. So uh, it was one of the aims to um, prepare non-emotions by uh, natural ones. So it was a good one, so, but on the other hand, like pH and uh, temperature, high temperature conditions, um, there are some of differences between twin AT non-emotions and whey proteins. Uh, twin AT were more stable, yes, but um, Whey protein is also stable like that. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome.